The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with a Wheat School episode. We're excited to get going with the year. And I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who's Agronomy Research Extension Specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How's it going today? It's going wonderfully. The sun is shining. Um, Kara, I you know I know it's only February, but I'm already excited uh, for spring to come around and see it hit the ground. So uh, I imagine we'll be heading heading there quickly. Time for, moves pretty fast this time of year. Oh, absolutely! It seems like it, we just gotta get through the like the lump of January, and then everything starts to sort of speed up, and uh, we will definitely be in the field before you know it. And uh, especially if we don't, uh, there's areas of, especially Alberta, well, Western prairies that are quite dry. So it it could be an early seeding. Hopefully, hopefully not too early, but we will see. So we are talking uh, today, we're here to talk about seed testing, the importance of it, um, specifically when it comes to Fusarium graminearum. Can you talk a bit about what you need to be looking out for in those seed tests and why it's important to pay attention to the seed you're getting either on your, that you grew yourself or you're getting off farm? Yeah, so, you know, I'll kind of preface this by saying um, Fusarium graminearum has been removed from the Pest Act in Alberta. Um, so now, uh, depending on where you are in the province, um, you can taper your management um, for Fusarium graminearum and FHB, depending on what your needs are in the region. So now um, the, the responsibility of testing uh, really comes down to the producers and testing that seed to make sure that whatever is going into the ground um, is is free of Fusarium graminearum. Um, you know, those those areas in the south may not be as concerned because they've had it there for a while, but those areas in central and northern part of the province that haven't seen it um, or see low pressure, it's very important for them to test the seed before they put it in the ground. Um, this past season, actually, based on 2020 seed labs, their their maps um, and their tests that they've they've brought in, um, we've seen this as being the third highest year of uh, amount of infected samples coming in for Fusarium graminearum. Um, you know, we're not seeing super high infection levels, uh, but what we're seeing is, is a greater percentage of samples that do have infection. And what, we're, what we think this might be is, you know, we're seeing a greater area of people with, with, a, with smaller infection. Um, so it's important because um, the way that Fusarium graminearum and Fusarium head blight work. So when you seed an infected kernel onto your farm, that infected kernel then grows into an infected plant that has Fusarium graminearum in it. And then the, the residue from that crop then gets distributed at the end of the year across the field. And then that harbors the inoculum to uh, potentially cause Fusarium head blight in following crops in following years. So if you can mitigate the amount of seed that has Fusarium graminearum going into your fields, you can reduce the potential impact of fusarium head blight on future crops. So what sort of tests can producers, like you said, you can get these seed tests, but what specifically um, are they looking out for? If they've never seen it before on their farms, how, how do they know what it, what it will look like on that seed test? Yeah. So, you know, depending on what seed lab you're sending it to, there's a few in Alberta that you can send it to and, and they'll do two different tests. So they'll do either a, a PCR or a plate test. Um, a PCR really just gives you a positive or negative whether you have it. Uh, and then a plate test will give you an actual quantitative number of this is the percent infection in that seed lot. So if you if you haven't seen it historically, and you get a positive from that PCR test, you really want to follow that up with a quantitative test, that, that plate test to get an idea of, okay, what level infection am I dealing with? And this is important, again, for those, those producers who don't have a history of Fusarium head blight or have a very small history of Fusarium head blight or downgrading because of Fusarium graminearum and FDK, uh, because they're the ones who want to try and aim for 0% infection of that seed. So getting an idea of what that infection level is can help you make decisions on whether utilizing you know a different seed lot um, or cleaning that seed a little bit further but um, in, te- in terms of visually on the seed lot you really don't you really can't tell what your infection level is going to be by looking at the seed you may see 
fusarium damage kernels, but that's not going to give you a true indication of what percent fusarium graminarum infection is. So it's it's important to send it into an accredited lab and get that that actual number back. And you can ask them specifically for those tests. And now we don't have to get into specific numbers. Do you want to touch a bit, though, on what impacts this has on the feed market as well? Why uh, producers really want to watch out for that fusarium graminearum? Yeah, so, I mean, it's not just the feed market. It is really all markets. Um, fusarium graminearum and fusarium head blight really pack a three pack punch they will impact yield because you will um you'll see fusarium damaged kernels so those are shriveled kernels so that's reducing your yield uh and then you're also getting downgraded because of those fdk kernels uh, and then on top of that you you'll get dawn accumulation so dawn is a mycotoxin that is poisonous to livestock but it also impacts the ability to say brew malt barley um, and it also impacts the ability to uh bake and use bread products with that. Um, so really depending, if you do end up with a high enough percentage of, of FDK and Dawn accumulation in your grain, the marketability aspect of that grain then decreases significantly. Um, so again, this is another important um, consideration when we're thinking about seed testing is, is we're trying to mitigate the impacts down the road by decreasing the amount of potential inoculum in that field. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh I think uh, that's everything. I think you know this is this is a very important disease uh, in Western Canada, um, and and we're seeing it growing across Alberta. We're seeing it move from the southern part of the province um, and moving north, and we're seeing parts in the Peace now where it's popping up. Um, so this is something that all producers uh, in those regions regions should be keeping an eye out for. Um, and for those producers who have a history of uh, Fusarium head blight from Fusarium graminearum, you know they're they're, they're there's still importance in getting that seed tested and getting an understanding of what's going on, whether you have Fusarium graminearum, because it can still impact germination, which is going to impact your, your crop stand. Um, and again, if you can prevent the amount of inoculum building by reducing the amount of Fusarium graminearum kernels going into the ground, um, then you can help yourself out in the future. So, Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kara.